why would we need a direct source of creatine from food or a supplement? Why wouldn't the body just produce the optimal amount? Yeah, yeah, that's a, good, that's a great question for an evolutionary biologist. I wish it did produce more. But the other thing that we don't usually discuss, and this can get some false positives when you go to your doctor when your annual physical is, as much as we produce about one to three grams primarily in the liver and or brain, we also excrete about that much is a form of creatinine. So there's a nice equal balance. Uh, and then in 1996, a couple of researchers that are the most famous, Eric, or, uh, Eric Holtman and Roger Harris, clearly showed that if you take in a little bit more, uh, that can actually accumulate. Right? So there's the big difference. Accumulate in our tissues, primarily muscle. And then if the muscle has more of this energy currency, maybe you can perform more repetitions. You can recover quicker. And over time, it may allow the individual to get bigger, stronger, faster. So you can also get creatine in the diet, but it's primarily only in red meat and seafood. So yes, do you need supplementation? The answer is no. Is it difficult to get the amount needed to show some beneficial effects? It is you would probably have to consume at least one to two servings of red meat or seafood a day. And then what about the majority of the population, vegetarians, vegans, uh, those emphasizing a plant-based diet, maybe they're allergic to seafood. Those all have issues. So I think it's one of the, the ingredients or compounds where supplementation might be just the easiest. It's kind of like uh, you know, a protein shake. Some people say it's very hard for me to get my total daily amount of protein through food. Is it okay to have a, a, a whey protein shake or a, a whatever? And I'm saying, of course, if you're trying to achieve a certain amount, I see no reason why that's difficult. Um, but the cost of food worldwide is, is uh, really high. Uh, environmental sustainability, ethical treatment of animals. There's a lot of issues why people say, hey, you know what? I can get it through red meat or seafood or commercially manufactured creatine. My understanding, and you kind of just spoke to this, is that if we don't have creatine in our diet, the amount that would be in, in say, an average diet, which I think is about one gram a day, is that right? About one to three. Now, if you're on a carnivore diet, you're going to be taking more. But just say the average omnivore who consumes a bit of, of red meat or seafood, maybe one to two, maybe three grams a day at most. Right, so my understanding is if you don't have that amount in your diet or you're not taking a supplement, that our body would only be able to replace about half of the creatine that it's using every day. Is that right? It's a rough estimate. So some people will excrete more creatine in the form of creatinine compared to others. Uh, a lot of that has to do with how much muscle mass they also have, but it also has to do with activity. So the more activity you have, the more creatine will be recycled in the muscle. Um, of course, that leads to also synthesis as well. But you're right. You kind of need a combination of natural synthesis, diet, and then see where we're at. So you've often hear or heard of individuals who are responders or non-responders to creatine. A lot of people say, I respond really well. I maybe increased body weight and I got a really good benefit. Others will say, geez, for no apparent reason, I took creatine supplementation and I didn't notice any effect. So it has to be based on the equal distribution or uh, um, equilibrium of all three of those factors. Right. So whether you're a non-responder or a hyper-responder is mostly determined by your baseline sort of dietary intake of creatine and your creatine stores or are there other factors like genetics yeah that that's primarily what's dictated but there's about three other things that can influence it so aging so the theory is we have a lot of creatine stored in these large muscle fibers called type 2 and the theory with aging unfortunately um when we get around the fourth or fifth decade we start to lose these massive muscle fibers so the theory is creatine may be slightly impaired in older adults. And we've uh, with Phil Chilebeck, we put out a good review on that, primarily in the lower limbs. The other is sex. We think that females, for some reason, sorry, biological females with the XX chromosome, they might have a slight impairment in the ability to respond. We're not sure if estrogen's involved, and that's an area that's uh, controversial, but there is some evidence. Um, and the other seems to be uh, the amount of red meat or activity that they're doing. So if your diet is low in red meat or seafood, you may respond better. Whereas if you have higher amounts, you're going to respond less. So it's kind of the, how much you have genetically, your diet, biological sex, and maybe activity level. Those are the four things we think really dictate your responsiveness. Mm -hmm.